Take your Bible, turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. King James. Amen? King James Bible. I asked Brother Lonnie what he wanted me to talk, you know, what topics he wanted me to cover down there. It'd be a Friday night and a Saturday morning deal. And he said, Mike, my people, they already believe the Bible. So he said, just come and just reinforce it in them. And that's good to do every now and then. Amen? It's good to just have it reinforced to us. Have, it, uh, have things brought to, back to mind again of why we believe, what we believe. That's why we continue to say, we don't just have one church service and say, okay, you're on your own, hope you make it to heaven. We have services so that we are put in mind the things of God. The world's not going to do that for you. Okay? The church is. This uh, message or messages, I don't know how God's going to lead, how God's going to do it. But it, it really is, uh, it's been on my heart, it's on my heart, and this really is a message that I'll just, I'm going to be honest with you, it is a message promoting church attendance. Okay? I'm not going to hide it from you. And I'm not going to beat you over the head with anything. I'm not going to nail you if you missed a service. I don't do that. Okay, if you if you don't show up one Sunday or one Wednesday night or whatever, I don't send the, the membership cops out after you wanting to know where you've been. Okay? But then on the same note, I don't want to neglect an opportunity to maybe encourage you that if things are not quite right in your life, or maybe maybe you just I don't know, kind of got back into some things that you said you wouldn't get back into. Or maybe just you just didn't feel like getting up and going to church. Or you didn't feel like this or everything. The devil will pile up all kinds of roadblocks. How many of you ever had that happen before? So I'm not going to use these messages. I really am not to, to try to hurt you or injure you. I'm not going to be mean about anything like that. I don't like doing that. What I want to show you from the Word of God is what you get by God gathering us together. What a church is supposed to be for. Why did you come here today? In fact, I'll just go around the room. Why did you come here today? Steve, Jennifer, where you guys live? Upstate? Western New York, Buffalo area. Buffalo area, okay. Why'd you guys come down here? Because we love you all and we want to be here physically, not just online. Amen. Amen. What they said was that uh, they, they just wanted to come down here and be here with us, not just see us online. You folks online, I want to encourage you. I want to invite you. Take a vacation time. Come down here visit. Amen. We'll help you get set up with a hotel room. We ain't paying for it. We'll help you get set up with a hotel room. If you've got an RV, we got a place for you to hook up. If you want to come down here, I've had people camp out, literally camp out here, just to come here for a weekend. We want to encourage you to do that, all right? Because it's a blessing. I want this church to be a blessing to people. Amen? Somebody else, why did you come today? Yes, sister. Amen. This is a food delivery service. Come here and get it. Amen. Come and get it. In order to have a dinner bell ringing. Who else? Why did you come here today? Ed, you guys come all the way down from Ferguson. Why did you come here? To hear the word of God. Amen. Who else? Why are you here? Go ahead, Sister Lynn. To be with people that I, that I know love me as much as I love you. Amen. Yes, sir. You guys travel, what, 100 miles? 105. I'm sorry, I was wrong. 105. <laughs> <laughs> You're very precise. And you got to I try to be. <laughs> Seriously, I used to ask the men at the chapel, why are you here this morning? Yeah. 
I in, in, a, in a jail, right? right? In prison. In prison ministry. I used to ask them, I said, look, why are you here this morning? Are you just here because it's chapel service, so it's time of the clock, it's time of the week, whatever? Or are you here because the Holy Spirit said, go? Yeah. And I'm not praying any of my family be anything else. I'm going to tell you, we're here because God said, go. Amen. 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 That's, I like that. That's I'm going to start preaching on that one right there. Okay? Matthew 24, are you there? Say amen. amen. Uh, let's pick it up in verse 29. Now, you might look at this and you might say, well, that's prophecy. That's, that's what's going to happen. Let me tell you, God is the same yesterday, today, and then forever. How God works in the future or how God worked in the past is how God is working now. And I, I was looking at this and I thought about that and I thought, you know what, that is right. Look at this. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after. Let me get this. Thank you for that, Caleb. I appreciate that. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall, watch this now. This, right here, this, where everybody is, is the gathering place. You did not spend the night here. You do not live here. You live other places. And what happened is, God sent angels out to your house to ride on the hood of your car... And push out every obstacle that would be in your way to keep a car from running a red light somewhere and bashing into the side of you or somebody just ahead of you to tie you up so you couldn't get here. Jody, you looked at him. What? That's a story, isn't it? We, I, I always talk about that, how, how the angels, that someday we're going to see exactly what all the things that they kept us from... Amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to know. Amen. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. They come from Buffalo, New York, far away Illinois, Ferguson. Festus, Hillsboro, DeSoto, where else? Fort Lauderdale. Ian just literally blew in here. <laughs> and there he was. So God gathered us together. He sent His angels. Made it safe for us to be here. And look at the context of when God gathered them together. It was after... A time of tribulation. Do you ponder that? Think about that. Let's pray. Father, I ask your blessings on this message. I thank you for it. Lord, it was good in my heart when you gave it to me, the way you gave it to me. And Lord, I don't know, God, that I can convey what you put in my heart and how you sowed this in. So, Father, I'm going to ask you to do it in the hearts of these people, in the hearts of those that are watching, listening online, people that are going to listen to this. After today, I am praying, dear God, that you sow this into their hearts in such a way, Lord, is that it will apply directly to them. May I say something? Lord, you caused me to say something today that will minister to somebody's heart who needs it. Somebody who's... Just desperate, God, for you moving in their life and they're hungry and they need to know what to do, God. And maybe they are in a time of tribulation right now. And Father, Lord, just teach us some good things from your word. I pray this, Lord. Help me to preach this message. Help me to know, God, when to stop preaching it. Lord, there's so much here. I don't think I'm going to get it all done today. So, Lord, you just help me and bless these people. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Here's, here's how God kind of sowed this in my heart. I was looking at this issue of how God gathers His people together. In this sense, He's sending angels out. 
And I, I listen, I don't know what you believe. You may believe something totally different. But from what I can see, this is God gathering us in the translation. Now, that may not, that may not be how you see it. That, that, and and I, I, listen, I promise you, I will forgive you for being wrong on that. But here's what I see. There are, in a practical way, there are already times of great tribulation in your life. Trials have already showed up. Tribulation times where you are troubled in your soul, worried about people, worried about situations, worried about help. maybe you can't pay all the bills and you're worried about that. Maybe you're worried about something going on at your job. Maybe you're, maybe you're troubled over your marriage. Maybe you're troubled about your own self and how you see, you're taking a look at yourself and you see that you're not really right with God, or you're not close to God. Or maybe some of the old junk in your life has crept back in you and you're troubled over these things. Whatever the reason, whatever, whatever God used, and God will send you tribulation. God will. But He'll do it for a reason. Tribulation, the Bible says, worketh patience. Because you know why? Because you're in a situation right now where you just feel like you're just being knocked around. You feel like you're being beat. You feel like that, that uh, it's like taking, um, taking a handful of wheat and rubbing it hard to get the husk off of it. Remember, that's what Jesus did. He took corn on the Sabbath day and put it in his hands and rubbed it together so he could eat the meat of that corn. And to me, that's what a picture of tribulation is. But what God is doing is that He's getting that stuff off of you that doesn't need to be there to begin with. And He's allowing you to go through that because at the end of it, you've cried out to God, you've prayed to God, you've prayed to God, and God, watch this, did not come immediately to rescue you. He waited. It's just like them telling Jesus, uh, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. Jesus, Lazarus is sick, Jesus. You need to go down there and heal him. He's sick. He's going to die, Jesus. You need to do something. And Jesus didn't do it. Why? Because watch this now. When I say Lazarus, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? He, he raised him from the dead. Lazarus is not a great story in the Bible because Jesus went and healed him when he was sick. He is a greater story than that. Jesus healed him when he was dead. That's healing, amen. People recover from diseases and sicknesses all the time. But how many people who are dead four days come back to life? It was a greater story and a greater way of God getting His glory and showing forth how strong He is and how good He is and what He can do. And there is nothing too dead for God to raise back to life. Amen. It's a greater story. So God allowed you to go through troubles and trials and you called to Him and He didn't come immediately and pluck you out. He made you wait. That's how tribulation brings patience. Because you learn that God will come and save me. It's not that I'm afraid God won't save me. I believe God will save me. I believe that God will do what God said He will do. And He will save me. But He will do it in His time. And so you just sit there and you say, what, and people say, what are you doing? Why don't you pray? Maybe, maybe we need more people praying. How many of you heard that one? Oh, let's call the preacher. But if, if we get the preacher praying, God will really listen then. I'm not saying don't call me. I'm just saying I'm not anything more special than you. And I'm not, oh God, God, now you better listen to me. Now I'm their preacher. God don't do that. God is teaching you when everybody else is panicking and you're sitting there going, I believe God's going to do it when God's going to do it. I believe in hope. 
against hope. I believe in hope and I'm not, not, not going to stagger at the promises of God. I believe that God will do what God said He will do. God is not a man that He should lie. God is going to do this thing. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun got dark. The moon refused to shine. The stars of heaven fell down like, uh, like they were in a tree and they were shaken like figs falling out of a tree when the wind's blowing at it. And it's not time for them to fall yet. It's how strong that wind is. And when everything is dark and everything is gloomy and it looks like it's nothing but pure evil, here comes the sign of the Son of God in the clouds Blowing the trumpet. Sending His angels out to gather His people together. This is why you're here this morning. Amen. Hey, wouldn't, turn, wouldn't hurt us for the next 20 minutes to act like Pentecostals. Now here's what God... Think church. That's my slogan for today. I tell you to think Bible. Now today you're going to think church. Why are you here? What is the purpose... Of God bringing us together. Because you go out and ask people, would you come to church? Oh, I believe that I can be just as good a Christian outside of a church. I don't need any church. Church is not for me. Well, I'm going to be honest. I know some people and have seen some people on Facebook. Definitely, they should not ever enter into a church. I can tell you that. They do a lot of damage. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. What's God going to do when He gathers us here? What, God, what is God going to do? How, how is God going to manifest Himself in our lives? What is the reality of, what, of why do we come to sit in this place to listen to this dummy named Mike Hoggard? Why would you even come here to listen to a fool like me? What is it that God is going to do for you when He brings you into this place? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 having made known unto us the mystery of His will. First thing that God's going to do is God's going to open up some doors of understanding for you that you would never have gotten anywhere else. How many of you ever sat in a church that doesn't matter if it's me or anybody else preaching, ever sat through a church service, the preaching's going on, and all of a sudden a light came on in your soul or in your mind and you went, that's it. Now, I've been looking for that for years. God just, and it sometimes won't even have anything to do with what I'm preaching. That's how you know God did it. God just immediately opened up the door of understanding in your mind. He made known unto you the mystery of His will. And He did it at the gathering place. According to His good pleasure, which He hath purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ. I like how God has brought us in here and at least on a few very important things, we're one. Anybody in here not believe this Bible? We are one in that. He's gathered us together and I don't have to try to convince you every Sunday of why this Bible's right. You already know that it's right. Amen? He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. In whom also, and, and by the way, this whole service, it's a, I, Steve, Jenny, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. That I asked them why they're here. They didn't come, they didn't say, we're here to see Mike Hoggard. They said, we're here because of this church. That was y'all all. They're here for you. Amen? Um, verse 11. And whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, that we should be to the praise of His glory. So that's another thing that when we're gathered here, we're going to sing, and we're not just going to go through the motions, and we're not just going to try to put on a show for everybody. We don't have a, a, a hired band up here playing all the correct notes. It's just me and Pam and Alicia. Hitting with, sometimes we hit them with our feet, elbows. Sometimes we, it's supposed to be in flat and we play it in sharp or whatever. But we're here, and as long as we're here, we should show forth 
the praise of His glory. Singing the old songs, amen, who first trusted in Christ, in whom also ye trusted, after that ye heard the word of the truth. We are going to hear, in the God gathered us here, to hear the word of truth. And I want to say to everybody listening to me online, if you're going to a church and they are not preaching the truth, get out of there. Get out of that place. It's going to influence you. It's going to split your family up. Half your family is going to say, well, I like that church. I don't believe all that stuff, the King James Bible stuff. Get out of that church before it's too late. Amen. You say, that's kind of mean. I don't care. I've had it with lying preachers. I think, that, I don't, don't get me started on that. You hear the word of truth. We're gathered here because we need to, we've been lied to, amen. We've been lied to by preachers. We've been lied to by TV evangelists. We've been lied to by friends and neighbors. We've been lied to by people in our own family. And we don't want to come here and be lied to again. So, if somebody, if you show up for church one day and you're not doing well, and somebody says, how are you today? Don't say, oh, I'm fine. Liar. Tell them, I feel terrible. I need prayer. Amen. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believe you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of I like how Paul puts it here. That Holy Spirit of promise. Because you've been through the fire. You've been through the darkness. And you don't need to hear about, oh, well, but tell you what, back in the old days, we never had those problems because we had church. You don't need to hear that. What you need to hear from the pulpit and from the families and the people inside the church, what you need to hear from them is... Listen here. The Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you, listen, God swore in His Word that He's going to bless you, and I believe that God is going to bless you. That is being sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That God's, you believe that what God said in His Word that He'll do, He will do. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'll never forget it. A few months ago, I had said that, boy, this is, I mean, the greatest church in the world, and boy, you people are awesome, and boy, there's just a good spirit here all the time, and man, I love this. And the devil laughed, and hell laughed, and said, we're going to take this place down one person at a time. And I'm not kidding you. He unleashed hell in this place. Had people fighting. Had people arguing. Had people bitter. People with stubborn hearts. It was awful. I didn't think I was going to make it. And God brought us out of that. Look around you. Everybody stop, quit looking at me and just look around the people sitting here. God brought us all back here. And He said, I'm going to make you sit together in heavenly places. I'm going to make you sit. I'm going to, the worst thing my mom tried to do to me was make me sit right next to my sister with her arm around me. I hated that. I bet you did. What God did, listen to me now, I'm being honest. What God did was expose areas that we all needed to work in. Right? God brought to the surface the corruption that lied underneath. And God purged it. 
And from what I can tell, it's not there anymore. And if it is, it shouldn't be there anymore. Amen? I know this didn't happen to everybody, and some of you are going, what in the world is going on? I'm just telling you, I, it was everywhere. Okay? God brought us out of the darkness and sounded the... Here's the trumpet right here. Sounded the trumpet and gathered us all back together again and sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? I am. I know that. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Turn there. How much of this do I want to preach? Man, I got... I'm going to, in a little bit, I'm going to show you the last slide I got on the deal. That way, if I run out of time, I will have gotten it out because I really wanted to say this part, if God will let me. Second Thessalonians 2, this is why we're gathered here together. Verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. So listen to what He's saying. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. You saw something on TV and it troubled you. Something, something in the news happened and it's troubling you. Something showed up on Facebook and it's troubling you. You heard a rumor about something and it's troubling you and it's got you shaken in mind. And you don't know what, what's going on or what's going to happen. And you're afraid. And He's beseeching us by our gathering together unto Him. And I think He means, think about, think church, and think about us being gathered together and safe in the arms of Jesus. And I'm going to beseech you on behalf of that. I want you to think about now, get your eyes focused on the redemption that draws nigh. And think about us flying up in the air, being gathered by Jesus Christ. And we're going to be together with Him for all of eternity I want you to understand that there is nothing that's going to happen in this world that is going to stop that from happening. Nothing is going to prevent Jesus from coming down in the clouds and calling us up to be with Him. There isn't anything in this earth that's going to happen. There isn't anything in heaven that's going to happen. Hell itself cannot come up and stop it. He is going to gather us together. And you get up one day in all your troubles and you say, I don't care, devil, what you do. I'm going to church today. Amen. You wouldn't believe how many times the preacher said that. My wife knows. She goes, honey, why are you laying that in bed? I don't want to go to church today. Well, you're going to church today. Get up. Okay. There ain't nothing the devil can do to prevent you from flying in the air to meet Jesus. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. You're here. You are here. And God has me. If you want to know how I spend my time this week, you come visit and just stay here all day and watch me. I don't sit here and play video games. I don't play solitaire all day I study I read emails I read the news what's going on I hear about lies people send pastor there's some new lie that's being spread out there and you need to know about this and I look into it and I find out where the lie comes from or what the lie is targeting at and so on I am here God has me here and God brought you here to keep you from being deceived Raise your hand if you know somebody that at one time they were in church and some devil deceived them out of that and they're in some weird, wacky thing now and you don't know if they're ever going to make it back. Listen, that devil's sharp. He knows exactly how to deceive people.
to prevent them from being gathered. Now, let me tell you this. When Christ comes, He is going to gather those who have been deceived. He's going to gather them first. They're the tares. Where the wicked one has sowed seeds of discord in people's lives. And they're going to be gathered first. And what's going to happen to them? They're going to be thrown in the fire. God has you and gathered you together to help you in your mind, in your heart, to know the truth. And the truth will... I was waiting for you to say set. Make you free. Amen? Study in your Bible every place where the word deceive, deceit, deceitfulness is used. And you'll find over and over and over, we are, we're just over and over, Jesus said, let no man deceive you. Be not, be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't fall for that. Know the truth. And you'll be free from that. Now, let me put this in before I forget it. I like this. This is the Isle of Misfit Toys. Say amen to that. Thank you, Johnny. Appreciate that. I'm pretty sure John's going to come flying out of that window one day. Psalm 106, 47. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen. To give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. You used to be one of those heathens, didn't you? Didn't you, Ian? You're one of those wicked, hell-deserving heathens. Hated God. Believed in evolution. Idiot. I love you. He used to be an idiot. Now he's not. Psalm 147, 2. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together. Look here, the outcasts. Of Israel. God has given me a church full of people that were kicked out of every other place. Every other hospital turned them down. All the psych wards said, we got, listen, we got no room for them. We can't fix them. And God sent you here. Now, who in here has got baggage? Did you look around to see all the other people that have baggage? We are going to have times where we're going to butt up against each other, aren't we? That's because we're outcasts. We've been thrown out. We've been rejected by everything else in this world. And God gathered us together. We are the outcasts that God gathered together in this place. And we're all misfit toys. There's something in everybody's life in here that is broken and doesn't work. And I, I like that. I don't pastor... The good, the good people, the holy people, the holier than thou saints. I pastor broken, hurting, ruined, degraded, rejects. If you've been rejected in this world, we'll take you. We'll take you. That's what this is. It's a hospital. Amen. They're gathered against us. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed. Now look at here. Here's, here's how the devil's going to do it. This is what he did, guys. Let us break their bands asunder. See this? It is a marriage band. And there has been times when the devil said to me and Sweetie Pie, I'm going to break their band. I'm going to ruin Mike so bad that it's going to destroy his marriage, it's going to ruin his kids, 
and destroy his ministry. And if there's anybody in this room that needs to be here, it's me. I need to be here. I need to be with God's people, with the rejects and the other people who've had their bands broken or the devil's tried to break those bands. See, I know some of you guys. I know how the devil has worked against you in your marriage. And he's tried it. And in some cases, he's succeeded. But this is why we're here. They gather together against us. Number 16, 19, Korah gathered all the congregation against them. Korah caused a church split in the nation of Israel. Now, do you know what happened to Korah and all the people that were gathered together with him? The earth opened her mouth and swallowed every one of them up. Amen. Here, here's to the backslider. Did you know you can be backslidden and come to church? Especially when you're hired to do so. Hired as in you're the preacher. You have to, you have to show up for church. Deuteronomy 30. Turn your Bibles there. I'll cut you loose on this one. Maybe. Deuteronomy 30, verse 2. And shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey His voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee. And will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. You know what happens when a person starts backsliding on the Lord? Normally, they quit going to church. That's what normally happens. And I kind of think sometimes... That that is God deliberately pulling them away saying, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you be in my house while you're like this. Does that make sense? I'm not going to let you do what you're doing and come to the house of the Lord. So I'm going to pull you out. You're going to miss the blessings. You're going to miss the opportunities for repentance. You're going to miss the preaching. You're going to miss the fellowship. I'm going to sit you out here in the wilderness and you are going to starve to death until you repent. Sound about right? Verse 4, If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will He fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Who in here has ever been backslid and God brought you back? Say amen. And now you love the Lord a whole lot more than you ever did. It's right. Listen, this Bible's right. Amen. He's going to go and fetch you and bring you back and put you back in with the gathering of His people. Somebody say amen. God, listen. God, God, so, God's so much in charge of your life, you have no idea. You have no idea. You get out there back in sin. You get doing that stuff you're doing. You pull away from God. God said, fine. And He was with you the whole time and you couldn't see Him. But then when He brought you back and you got your senses, you're like the prodigal son. Your, your brain came back to you. Why? Because you were looking at hog slop going, boy, that looks good. 
And God brought you back. And when you turn around and look back at where you were, you see that God never left you one second. He was there the whole time orchestrating the events of your life so that you would repent and come back to Him. This Bible's right. One more. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate, and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. We are Bible reading Bethel. God gathers you here. Uh, Steve and Jenny, I can ask you. Uh, Mike, I can ask you. Sasha, and I can ask you guys. What is it that you liked about what I did in the videos, the presentations, and the preaching? Sugar-coated at all. You just put it out there. It was from where? The Bible. It's from the Bible. Okay? God put that in my heart. That's not how I used to do it. But God put that in my heart to just fill the message with Bible, 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 Bible. God gathers us here and He's going to bring out the book on us. And whatever the book says, and here's what you're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to call you out. If you're willing, if you come here and are here and will say publicly, Mike, as long as you preach that Bible, we will stand and we will believe what that book says and there'll be no arguments ever. If the Bible says it, then the Bible's right, and we stand and consent to that. Would you stand? The second time I heard Reg Kelly preach, he preached, don't sell your vineyard. And he was in a room, brother, full of preachers, conservative preachers. And he, at the end of his sermon, and I'd never heard anybody preach as mean as he did. At the end of his sermon, he said, for those of you, you believe every single word in this book. You don't believe there's any mistakes in this book. And you are willing to stand in honor of the King James Bible. Would you stand? He says that I was the first to stand up. If I was, it's because I was scared to death of Reg Kelly. But did you know that there were preachers in that room that did not stand? And they went after Reg after that sermon and they attacked him after that thing. And I was there. I watched it happen. He got attacked over that message saying, well, there are mistakes in the King James. And he said, we are not on the same page. We're not even in the same book, apparently. This, this church is going to be Bible reading Bethel. That's what God gathered us for. You Sunday school teachers, you teach this book. Okay? You, you parents at home, you give your children the words out of this book. Grandparents, teach your grandchildren this book. Do it behind your parents' back if you have to. Give them this book. Amen? Did you have something to say? Me? God put that in my heart, people. You honor, you praise God for that. Don't praise me, okay? You tell God thank you that that's what He did in me. Okay? That's, this is our invitation, by the way. I'm going to tell everybody. Man, everybody responded in the invitation Sunday. It was amazing. I love you people. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Be dismissed.